overall survival uh, will be followed and updated and early results, we don't have enough power and event are quite encouraging. Um, and I would say that disease-free survival is an important endpoint in situation where survival may be prolonged to take it, you know, an early look at it, which make an overall survival, initial overall survival attempt uh, as an endpoint impractical. And we know that from the FDA itself that issued a guidance document a couple of years ago that did endorse disease-free survival and um, had been used for traditional approval for breast cancer, for colorectal cancer, and uh, others. And it can be a surrogate endpoint of direct clinical benefit based on the specific disease, the magnitude of benefit, the available therapies, and actually the risk benefit ratio and the toxicities. Yeah, um, you know, adjuvant studies um, in renal cell cancer have been tried since the 70s, since the early 70s, and um, all of them have been negative except for one, actually, dealing with sunitinib, um, and that drug is approved in the USA, but it's not approved in, in the adjuvant setting, but it's not approved, um, uh, you know, by the European uh, Union because it didn't show an overall survival because of some discrepancy between, uh, uh, you know, the, between investigator assessed and uh, actually uh, the independent review and because of decreased quality of life on therapy. But also more so is because uh, sunitinib and other TKIs result from other VEGF targeted agent studies were completely negative agents like pizopinib, excitinib, that are all active in metastatic disease, uh, completely, um, you know, failed. Uh, so uh, having no therapy uh, or having placebo was a logical uh, option here. Well, I think ideally you want the right drug at the right amount uh, you know, at the right, uh, you know, schedule uh, for the patient. We know that this could be, you know, hard to do. Uh, so uh, these will be the future. Future studies will build on optimizing, um, you know, the results that we have. I can tell you with combination, uh, probably there are patients that need more than uh, pembrolizumab, a uh, patient whose tumor even progress on adjuvant pembrolizumab. Now, what's the ideal agent to combine uh, with is an open question. VEGF target therapies are a possibility, knowing largely these drugs as single agent have shown activity in metastatic, but not in the adjuvant setting. So are we ready for a leap of faith here? And certainly the quality of life, uh, you know, uh, will, um, be affected during this, you know, the time patient on VEGF uh, target therapy. There are other agents that could be uh, better tolerated or more so, you know, we know that even in patients that have surgery alone, uh, there are patients that are cured with surgery alone, even though they're high risk. So identifying those patients will be, um, you know, important, uh, you know, so we are discussing several, you know, um, things now. Most importantly is uh, the next set of results from Keynote 564, uh, including overall survival update, including quality of life, which was captured, by the way, on 564. And it's important, you know, to, to listen to the patient voice. These are patient-reported outcome. And make sure at least that on therapy, for a year, the patient don't feel uh, worse. So it, this is the first result, and we are quite excited about uh, this and uh, more to come. <laughs>